spiritual gifts. Okay, note that it's plural. About gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God, Spirit, singular, of God, says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another uh, distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines here ends the reading for our text today let us pray good and gracious Lord Jesus you are our one Lord and Savior for us all Open our ears this day to hear your word and that alone as we gather in your name, trusting that where there's more than two or three, you are present with us, for you are one Lord, and we are gathered in your presence. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So... Um, I was trying to emphasize as I was reading and I was preparing you um, to hear the text. Did you notice? Um, he talks about plural gifts. Um, he talks about different manifestations. He talks in the plural. But when he talks about the Spirit of God, Paul is um, emphasizing in that Pauline way over and over again, one, the one spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one, right? I mean, he's just like drilling this over and over again. And actually, if uh, we were able to, we would continue appropriately so with the next um, at least 12 verses, a little more, as Paul goes on then, one body, many parts. So he's already started the argument when it comes to spirits. There's many different gifts, right? But there's one, listen, one spirit. So then he goes on. There's one body, many parts, many parts. They're all different and everything, but one spirit. Now, why is this? Uh, this is important. Now, we should know this is important if you've been hanging around in church for uh, very long or... You don't even have to hang around for very long at all. If you listen to any parts of the um, different liturgies or you hear uh, um, some of the, well, mostly the older hymns, but even some of the newer ones. But um, it's just there. It's, it's just drilled um, at us. And then in the prayers, too, like if you listen to the canned prayers that... Um, are written up already in hymnals and stuff. It you hear uh, things like one Lord, uh, one faith, one hope, uh, one birth, one Lord and Savior of us all. Um, uh, you know, it's just one God, Father of us all. It's like the power of one. I mean, I suppose that was one thing we could call this. You know, I mean, Paul calls it spiritual gifts, but it could be the uh, power of one or we could call this section uh, one and the same uh, and why is this so important to Paul well uh, Paul usually when he'd sit down and write uh, to people in a church he uh, it, 
he'd slide in a few good things uh, every once in a while, um, usually in the greeting or something. Then, but he was easing into a purpose for writing, and his purpose for writing wasn't a slap on the back. Usually, it was more. It was a lower pro, uh, part of the uh, anatomy. It was a slap on the rear, a kick in the a, a swift kick in the rear because somebody was uh, messing up. Somebody was teaching something that was contrary, or they were just following patterns, or they were practicing things that just weren't uh, right according to the faith. And it was Paul's job, whether he was in prison or not, to pick up a pen and write to them about the one true faith. So here now we can gather the Corinthians have gotten into <clears throat> some different beliefs about the Spirit that Paul's correcting. First of all, there's one Holy Spirit and gives a lot of different gifts. Um, and the gifts aren't like one's more important than the other. There's many different gifts, many different manifestations of it, but there's one Holy Spirit. Now, but according to that one Holy Spirit, then there is, and he does address this, if you noticed when I was, when I was reading it, he does use plural. He, use, he uses spirits, plural. Um, there's one Holy Spirit. There's the Spirit of God, one. But then he says uh, one of the gifts is to distinguish between spirits. Okay, so um, Paul is trying to um, help the Corinthians understand a couple things here. There's one Holy Spirit who works in different ways and gives different gifts, um, just like the different parts of the body that he's going to go on to describe. But it's one Holy Spirit who proceeds from the one Lord and Savior of us all, who is the only, the one begotten Son of the one Father. Now you see, I'm sure, uh, because we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity coming down here, that, you know, through the ages, um, there's been some confusion, whether we are, you know, mono, one, theus, God. Uh, do we believe in one God? Um, and so Paul's going to make sure that no one walks away from this argument, and so am I as your preacher, that we believe in one God um, and Father of us all, who sent his one begotten Son, and according to uh, his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one Spirit, he gifts us um, and graces us uh, with, his, um, with his power and might in many different ways, but it's the work of one Spirit. Now there's many spirits, and uh, there's an evil um, spirit uh, that lives and reigns um, in this playground of this world groaning in travail. Now to deny this would uh, seem to be something that's been popular across uh, theological teaching for years. And I, it was uh, not lost on me that I went from being in seminary to serving in Tanzania, East Africa. Now, in seminary, I went into seminary believing that, you know, there's good and evil and um, that, you know, God is good and that he's at war with evil, the devil, um, Satan, um, you know. Uh, and that was what I was taught, Sunday school confirmation. And it was biblical, um, and I remember my confusion in seminary when it was um, kind of uh, broken to me that, well, there isn't such thing as demon possession and, uh, you know, this, you know, evil spirits, and then they, um, <clears throat> they did like this theological calisthenics. It was like a, you know, a bad mix that came out like some kind of um, religious gymnastics trying to um, make sure you left seminary believing that um, Jesus faced down a lot of like schizophrenia or um, uh, you know epilepsy or something but that you know there's not like demon possession and that kind of thing well you know knock yourselves out guys <laughs> you know then you go to East Africa and demon possession is um, is uh, very prevalent um, amongst the Maasai people, which were the, that was the tribe in Africa that we, specifically in Tanzania, that we worked um, with. 
and um, almost exclusively the one tribe. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, you can deny it all day, or when it's in your face, you can say, yeah, we have evil, uh, many manifestations of evil, lots of evil spiritual stuff going on in America. But here in Tanzania, it's a lot easier to see and identify. And not scary, um, you know, like Hollywood tries to scare the kajibers off of you, and it's bothersome and troublesome, um, but it's... Uh, but there's one Lord and Savior of us all. There's one Holy Spirit who has um, eternal reign beginning now. So um, no matter what your gift is, like distinguishing spirits or being able to tell that someone has a bad spirit or whether it would be to communicate in a language, a spiritual language, with an interpreter there, or whether it is to utter... Uh, prophecy or to preach or or uh, to teach in your giftedness, whatever it is that the Spirit is leading you to be able to do, it isn't for your own good. Um, it's for the good of the community, which is very clear in Tanzania. You weren't given the ability or the discernment um, or any of these gifts of the one Holy Spirit for yourself. Um, it was not just for the edification of the whole community, but it was service. Uh, this is how you served God. And um, those gifts weren't for yourself. They were for the other, for the neighbor. So um, the Corinthians had some confusion with that. The Tanzanians didn't have any confusion with that. But then, you know, I remember back then in my days in seminary where you know, when I first came in and I heard people talking about the charismatics, and I, um, you know, I just wasn't my terminology, so I thought about, you know, like people that, uh, I'm going to vote for him because he's so charismatic, you know, like in the political world, and it's like, oh, you mean uh, he's a good speaker, and you think he's good looking, and, you know, they'd always talk about, like, John Kennedy was charismatic, and, you know, some people would say other presidents were charismatic, I was like, huh, I don't get that at all, uh, but, um, I realized real early on they weren't talking about that. They were talking about people that were charismatic, you know. They they were those guys. Um, very, uh, very strange. And um, it was strange on both sides. It was the people that doubted that there were people that would have gifts of the Spirit because mm, that's pretty much clear in the Bible. Um, or that were jealous of people that seem to have gifts of the Spirit, uh, uh, different manifestations of the one Holy Spirit, um, or who thought that these people were not Orthodox or uh, were not um, true Lutherans uh, because they were off on their spiritual flights or whatever, and then they throw around the word enthusiasm, you know, like where you separate um, the Holy Spirit and the work of the Spirit uh, from the Word of God, which is, you know, Luther said, one of the worst heresies there is. But, but you know, it was just like this contempt almost for somebody who was charismatic. Um, on the other hand, then you had the people that, if you didn't have those gifts, uh, or you didn't have the kind of gifts they had, or they ran, I charismatic, well, then they were kind of the causing the problem over here. And these guys were causing the problem over here. They were dissing them, so they were trying to stand up and show how faithful they were. And these people over here, um, you know, it just went back and forth. Um, it's a weird thing uh, to have a problem about, except for the Corinthians had obviously problems about understanding of the gifts of the Spirit also. They also had problems understanding that if you've been gifted with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the one Holy Spirit, then um, those aren't for yourself. Uh, they're for the other. They're for the community. And that's all that Paul's taking on here. So, um, you know, for those who want to tell you that there uh, isn't spiritual warfare going on, well, I wouldn't listen to them. I'd listen to Jesus. And for those who uh, do want to convince you that... Um, anybody that says they have a gift of the Spirit or that speaks in tongues or something, there's something wrong with them, well, 
we'll take it up with Paul. Um, those categories, um, charismatics or or um, Genesios or Evangelicals or whatever that we do within the Lutheran body of the Christian faith, uh, makes me want to vomit. It's, it's really sickening. I think if Paul were here, he'd take pen in hand in his corner of the prison and write to us about that kind of thing. Um, and he'd probably remind us, you know, people, um, whatever type of Christian or Lutheran you uh, think you are, remember one thing. There are many gifts. There's many manifestations. Um, but there's one Spirit. There's one Lord and Savior of us all who proceeds from the one Father. So it's the power of one. And, um, you know, God's Holy Spirit is the one. But then we pluralize oftentimes in that he died for everyone. Then we can get in problems. Well, he died for every one. And it's the one spirit and we are the followers, plural. We are the believers, plural. We are the receivers, plural. We are the children, plural. We are the disciples, plural. But the gift given and the power of the one word is, is that was one Lord, Jesus, who died on one cross, one day, one time, and he did it for you, for you, so you can pass it on for the other, for one other, the power of one, it's one and the same, your faith isn't just for you and your salvation, it's for the community that starts with one neighbor and one lost sheep that are waiting to hear one word of hope. You go get them. In Jesus' name, the one Lord and Savior of us all, of course. God bless you all.